Hello and welcome to another TF2 Stay video. This is Jacob, uh, more Hobo 355. And today we're going to be taking a look at Koth Lakeside Final, is the version. Um, this was the map that was played yesterday, uh, which is Monday night, for the UGC Week 1 of the Highlander Tournament. And of uh, Season 9. So, anyways, um, I'm just going to be kind of running through this real quick. Um, if you haven't ever watched Hindsight or Moose Tracks, you should definitely give those a look sometime, as those are really good, informationful videos that tell you a lot about the map. I'm just going to be running down basically what our team did as far as strategy and where we went wrong. Um, so, typically, right when we get out of the gate, we uh, either head to the pool house. I'm going to change to demo man real quick. We either go to the pool house or to main. So um, if we're going to pool house first, most of our team will head up this way through this tunnel and right to the pool house. Uh, as demo man, I usually go right here, put a stick there, dead it, do a better jump than that. But you get the point. Get up here and start putting sticks down on these entrances to block off the enemy team. Um, otherwise, our team will go out main. This is usually called the main door. Um, and I'll put a sticky basically the same spot. And not hit that wall. <laughs> but jump out here and start blocking off the enemy from getting on the point. Um, yeah, and so usually what happens is an NG will pop down the dispenser there for your team. The combo Usually when we call it these positions for where we're rolling out, it usually refers to the combo, which uh, in our case we usually try to have it the Medic, Heavy, uh, Demoman, and Pyro. Usually just us four stay in this little group and tends to work out alright. Um, then usually our Soldier or our Scout will end up going around these flanks and watching these rooms to tell us if there's anyone in there. And yeah, so... Uh, I don't think I've mentioned it before in this video, but my team's the Golden Gents. We are Steel Blue in UGC um, in this UGC League this season, and we went against Agua Ruum. I think I'm saying that right. Um, it was a close match. We lost um, four to three. Or I guess three to four. If you're thinking about our our score first, but um, yeah, it was a close game. We ended up winning. Oh. We won the first round three to two, and then they ended up coming back and winning the last two rounds in the second round, or s last two, I guess, games in the second round, and that ended up sealing it for them. So they won the first match of the season. Um, yeah, but basically, what we used to do a lot as a team is we used to roll out to uh, the pool house and try to take control of this as much as possible and this the position of the pool house is a really powerful position you got that health pack right there that's a full health pack um, and from here you can pretty much have access to any part of the map you can go right to the mid there or you can get onto your enemies uh, we we labeled this platform so you can get onto their enemy platform which also gives way to easy access to the battlements which is that strand of platforms up there so yeah, and uh, what we usually tended to do in scrims before that, uh, before we did the match, we would roll out up here, gain control of this, and it worked out all right. Usually, it led to, uh, I mean, it, it always depended on where the enemy team rolled out, and sometimes it led to a little disconnection between me and the rest of the team. And especially if they if they rolled out main and we rolled out house, we could. I, I mean, it wasn't the best idea, or it wasn't the best situation because they could easily get around behind us to where we were, and they could. Um, and yeah, where, whereas we could only go from the uh, pool side right here, which. Although this is a great position to hold, it's really choky. If a demo man would pop crits, he could pretty much wipe you all out if you're just standing in the pool house like this. And 
<coughs> so anyways, what I felt as a team we did wrong last night was we failed to protect the medic in a lot of situations, and, um, and yeah, their, their spy got a lot of picks on our medic. I think he died just in the first round, so the first, I guess, five games since we won three and they won two. Um, our med got picked, I think, almost 30 times, which is not an ideal number, obviously. Um, and so that definitely put a damper on our plays. Um, there was a lot of times that I feel our medic could have been in a safer spot, or we should have been, like, for a fact known where the sniper was before we even decided to try to do some sort of push onto the point, or to uh, push to counter an attempt from them to cap the point, and it, might, it probably would have worked a lot better, um, especially because on this map, snipers are huge, 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 as they can just stand up on these battlements and pretty much have a view of the entire map and uh, get a lot of headshots on the medics and other key classes. So I think if you're trying to do a push on this map, you can definitely try to get your soldier and scout take out the enemy sniper. It would help a bunch. I know as since I played Demo Man, a lot of the time I've popped we pop crits and I'm going in and I'm trying to debt stuff, and then I get sniped by a sniper in the head. So I end up dropping, or I end up dying. So our medic has to transfer his crits to uh, someone else, and that was just kind of a lack of communication and lack of getting the enemy sniper down, especially on this map. I can't stress that enough how big snipers are on this map. But anyways, <coughs> and so as we held this a lot in scrims, we kind of decided through the help of a couple mentors and stuff or just listening to some feedback on our scrims, we decided that we shouldn't try to hold that as much, but then that led to in the game or in the actual match, we almost completely neglected the pool house a lot of the time. So most of our combo was right down here. We were situated right here, but then that gave easy access. The soldier, the spy, and the scout would easily be able to come up here. Usually our sniper was positioned somewhere around here, um, watching on the point, maybe trying to get the other sniper, and to be able to watch through here, through the pool house to the other side, because um, we knew that their team like to hold their platform a lot. But anyways, it allowed for them to uh, come over here. They would usually pick the sniper really, really quickly because the soldier and scout were both there and uh, swing around and both try to get a picks on her medic, which is why our medic died quite often. So I feel that we could have held the house a lot better. Um, I was trying to hold with our combo a lot more, although I feel in some situations it might have been better for me to like hold inside this house as long as I had some support from other classes like the pyro or maybe the engineer. If he like plopped down a mini sentry right here and that could help me spam out. I usually, I like putting sticky traps right there. You just put them like right there on this corner and then they can't see them until they're within range of them. But anyways, um, <coughs> yeah, so if we had been able to hold house, or the pool house a lot better, then I feel like that could have completely changed the game for us. We uh, That wouldn't have allowed the scout and the soldier to uh, have such easy access back behind us, which would have reduced the number of times our sniper would have get killed, which in turn would have given him the ability to get more picks on the medic and other key classes, as well as letting the scout and soldier get behind us and um, attack our medic. So just kind of a string of events that ended up hurting us in the long run. We, uh, yeah, again, it was a really close match. Aqua Ruim is, uh, they, I think in the last season they scored 4-4 four four as far as wins loss goes. So, um, we were expecting them to be, yeah, a semi decent, uh, decent team, but they turned out to be a great team, actually, and uh, 
I look forward to playing them in the future. Hopefully we'll both get to playoffs and there will be a match that we uh, both can be a part of again sometime. Um, they were all great, great opponents and we're both great teams and it was a good match around, or all around. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could say. Um, I guess I could go ahead and talk because I haven't talk too too long here. Um, I guess I could go ahead and say some of my demo man strategies is obviously I talked about my rollout before. Usually you just put a sticky behind you and spawn to shoot as close as you can to the gate. And then I usually only just do one sticky jump. Um, I know I think some people do too. Um, I just do that so I have basically as much health as possible. Um, because I could easily be taken out by one good sticky from the enemy demo man if he comes over right there. So, other than that, if I'm holding down here by our dispenser, um, a lot of good things is that when they were pushing, darn, um, when they were pushing through the uh, house like this, I would a lot of time put sticks right there, and they would either have to take the time to shoot them down, air blast them away, etc. I wasn't. I, I don't put them there expecting to, to get some sort of a uh, some sort of a med pick out of it, but usually if it's like a lighter class such as demo man or soldier that they're uh, uh, gonna pop on or something like that, then if I put down, well, I guess even heavy, if I put down enough stickies, that can send an uber to heavy just flying across the map. Um, so it's a tactic that I just learned recently uh, with the help of a demo friend, just like how well demo man can actually counter ubers like that and uh, just by launching them around, jostling them around, it cuts off their uh, ability to aim very well. Soldiers not so much, but heavies especially, the farther they are away the less damage they're able to do. Um, and especially if you're able to get stickies up in a certain spot like that and or just be in a good spot to uh, spam out their med. If they pop crits and you're able to kill the med then you definitely should do that. That'll probably save the lives of you and countless teammates and definitely help out your team um, yeah not die which is always a good thing. Usually I don't know this probably isn't the best strap but usually if they pop crits I tend to like instead of just running out in the open and trying to run away I usually kind of hide and it's you know I I usually if I would run out in the open like this especially if it's a demo man with sticks I'm expecting to die anyways so by hiding I'm trying to I usually try to spam up on point and do some damage maybe take out the medic so the crits stop but again that's situational up for debate I don't know um, um, other than that, if you're playing Demo Man on this map, be sure to like rotate around. Don't just stand in this one spot. Um, I need to tell our medic that because he like to stand here and get hit with stickies. But um, yeah, make sure you're rotating each side. You could also probably call out uh, where the uh, enemy sniper is if you just peek up here a lot. You can pretty m you can see him pretty easily. You know, if you pop up here and you see him over there, he's probably either way over there on their platform or he's standing on this battlement right there. Um, if you see him over there, then you can just rotate over here. And as long as you don't, like, peek way out here, you're pretty much protected against him. Um, but anyways, a lot of the time I would spam right here, which basically puts the damage right there in that area which is usually where their dispenser is where their team is hiding up right here and uh, if you know that their team's there that can get you a lot of picks or just a lot of damage on them which is helpful for your team um, so yeah um, there's not really much else as far as strategies go um, if you are demo man and you get popped crits on I would definitely focus there I would definitely focus in the house if they're pushing through there, or just, you know, it's always situational, it just depends where they're at. Um, 
Oh yeah, another good thing I found out in the lobby. It was really funny to do. Um, I used a crits, I think, and took out a lot of their team. And so the medic went back through main and was hiding through there. And so I just sat here. Actually, this was a scrim. I sat there and lobbed a sticky over. So basically, their medic was running. The sticky got lobbed over. And right as the medic was like running through here, I just hit him in the back with the sticky because I knew he had only about 30 health left or so, and so I got a pick on him, which is pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, that's just all about knowing, kind of predicting where the medic's going to be because uh, when there are a lot of their teams wiped, they're, you know, the medic's probably not going to just come over here and just kind of stand here. He's going to be heading back towards the spawn to pick up whoever's spawning closest, or spawning next, so yeah, just a lot of stuff like that, it's just good to know, um, and yeah, as far as calls go for your team, I find it extremely beneficial when your team calls if someone's moving through a certain spot as Demo Man, because there's been countless times, you know, we're calling scouts going through the pool house, so I'll just come up here and put a few sticks there, the scout just runs out blindly, because he, he, you know, he doesn't, he knows the Demo Man's not up here, but he jumps out here, there's sticks right there, I usually dead them, and do at least, I'd say, 80 to 100 damage, if not kill him. So, that makes it easy pickings for the sniper on our team, or whoever happens to be up there. Um, I feel like, as, as far as our scout and soldier go, it would be helpful if they especially on this map, or maybe depending on the other what the other maps are, if they could rotate as a unit together around, and so that means they could rotate, go maybe try to get a bed pick if we need it, or they could also should be able to rotate back quickly enough to help defend the sniper against anything that's attacking him, um, or anything that's attacking the med as well. So just things like that. Um, I think compared to a lot of uh, King of the Hill maps, this is a really, really different King of the Hill map. There, I mean, there's similar King of the Hill maps compared to this, um, but I think this one is extremely different because of how how crucial the sniper is on this map compared to many other maps, like on Asheville. For example, I mean he he can do pretty well by peeking through the uh, mid garage and peeking off of the either uh, platform side. But you know, f for a sniper on this map, there's these entire battlements you can go across and just sit there and wait for a pick or whatever. And also, even if you're if you're pushing up, pushing forward, you can always just kind of go right here, and you just have these beautiful sight lines, like, all down where the enemy's going to be. You can pick them right through there as they walk around that corner, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I feel like, I'm not saying this is a bad map in any way, but I feel like this map is the reason our team lost. I don't think it's a necessarily a poor teamwork or poor DM on any of our parts. It's just our team, we weren't super well situated with the map, and we, uh, yeah, uh, we were kind of running a backup sniper, and, or a sniper who's been out for a lot of our scrims this week, so just communication errors all around kind of lost us the game. So, anyways, I think I've been talking long enough, I'm going to go ahead and call it quits for now. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and be sure to give me feedback on how you like the video, and come back for more TF Tuesday videos every Tuesday. I'll be uploading them here on my channel, Hobo3055, and I hope you come back and watch more videos, because you guys are all awesome people. So, thanks, and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye.